Hi, my name is Jan. Welcome to Butterfly Tracks. Today's video is a van tour, but it's also about choices. Danny has a Class A motorhome. He calls it a diesel pusher. So he has that option, but he has chosen more freedom and mobility with this much smaller rig. He has downsized to a much smaller rig, but a really nice one, and you'll see that. But I like his, I like his attitude, and you'll see his attitude come out all the way through, but especially at the very end. So hope you stay to the end for kind of a special message from Danny. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go meet Danny. Hi, I'm Danny Sherrod. Uh, this is a ProMaster 3500. The actual van converter was Pleasureway out of Canada. It's a 2019 Pleasureway. Uh, had since since it was new. I've been RVing since uh, roughly 1999, and started out in a pop-up. Then I went to a 40-foot four, four travel, and then another 40-foot four travel, which I still have. But I got this one because it gives me more access to state parks, to, uh, to federal campgrounds, to backcountry, to national parks and national uh, monuments. So it's a little more flexible. It's not also for going in the backcountry. I can't go way off in the backcountry, but I can to a point. But it gives me a lot more flexibility to do that. The other reason I got it is when I'm driving down the road and I see a really cute little restaurant or cafe or hamburger joint, I can stop in this, whereas in my 40-foot rig, it was pretty much impossible unless I parked way out of town and walked in or disconnected and drove in. Um, I, st I, I still like the bigger rig, but it's, it's, it's for a different purpose. For, for, the, for the trips like this where I'm seeing the country and uh, uh, not staying in one spot very long, it's perfect. The, the, this gives me much more mobility, it's easier to drive. And uh, it's, it's about like driving a pickup. Uh, the the motorhome is is complicated to drive. Uh, I'm a recent widower, and so when my uh, wife was still alive, we both sort of took both of us to drive the 40 footer. But with this one, it just takes me, so it works out very well. Would you like to come in and see the, see the RV? Come right ahead. There are a few things that I changed out on the coach. I raised it, it has a generator in the back that is very low and I kept dragging it. So I had a company called Off Highway Van uh, raise this up four and six inches, depending on whether they're in the front or the back. <laughs> the other thing I did was I changed out the radio. The radio they had in this was terrible. So I went to a different radio. I'll show you first off the front seat. It rotates. Above is where I keep pillows, and also the covers to cover the, the windshield. So it's nice and, and insulated. Inside I have a, a water heater. I have an inverter, of course. I have a, a sink, a two burner stove, and a microwave convection oven. And more storage up above. And then a three-way fridge. This is the biggest fridge I've seen in a commercial, commercially built van. And that's one of the reasons we, we bought it. In the bathroom, the way this works, commode, of course, shower, and this curtain that goes all the way around. So everything gets wet, but it didn't hurt anything. And in the back, it makes into a, a little nook mm -hmm. where you can sit and have the table. The table can also go to the front and be taken out. The bed actually... Uh, goes down so I have one continuous bed back here so I have an AC unit uh, it requires power or a generator but here up, up in Eagle Nest is nice and cool so it doesn't I don't need it. Okay, I have an exhaust fan that opens up it starts raining it closes up and other everything is controlled off this one panel everything except the water heater this is a three season coach so it's, it's uh, all the tanks are underneath, but they're exposed and has uh, lithium batteries. And, uh, but, so when it gets cold, you got to turn off below 32, have to turn off the battery and winterize it. 
in, in the big Texas freeze we had a few years ago, my wife and I were in this, and we got stuck out of Ozona, uh, in, uh, Texas, and so, but we, we couldn't run the heater, and we couldn't run the power, but we could put on blankets, so we were nice and toasty, mm. so it all worked out well. I like the, the ability to park anywhere. To, the neatest thing is to go through a little town and, and find a, uh, a, a city park and just pull in and have my lunch. That That's really fun for me. Or drive down the road and see a hamburger joint or a, or a Starbucks or whatever and be able to stop and visit them without having to think, well, I'm in the RV, therefore I got to park the thing someplace and then come back later on. I can do anything along the way that I want to. It's just it's just very easy to get in places. I am a full-time traveler. Uh, I've been been traveling full-time since off and on re re reality since uh, uh, 1999. Uh, again, we started out in a pop-up, moved into to 40-foot uh, uh, rigs, 40-foot diesel pushers, and I've also traveled overseas quite a bit. But when I'm in the United, in the United States. I definitely like being in a uh, in an RV or or one of these, and I actually prefer this over over the forty footer. Probably sell the forty footer. <laughs> I stay in a lot of uh, what in Texas we call a roadside park, which is a rest area. I like those a lot. I've uh, stayed just all over a lot of different places. I've I've, I've never not felt safe. Um, it, I just feel very comfortable doing doing this sort of thing. I've never had any threats. Um, it's just a comfortable life for me. And this just rolls down and and zips. But there's something really cool about this. I'll show you shortly. So it's all zipped up, but you can push it open. And you just crawl, just come right in. Here's the utility center. And it has a, the a 30 amp plug. I can do uh, a 20 amp unless I'm running the AC. And then uh, here's my propane uh, valve. And then city water, which I never use, I always go off my tanks. And then this is an outside shower. Nice. Another thing I add to the to the coach, two things. One is a spare tire. It didn't come with a spare tire when I when I bought it. And they gave a gave me a kit to repair the tire that it, if I had a flat on the road. But I've yet to have a flat on the road on a vehicle I didn't shred the tire, and so I bought the spare tire rack. The other thing is a bike rack. Mm -hmm. All the parts are on, aren't on right now because I'm not riding a bike on this trip, and they keep I keep hitting my head on the bars. So that, that's a rack to go with it. Okay, back in here I have all my goodies. I have my power cords. My, my, my lifters, so when I'm not level, I can get level. Uh, I have a lithium battery in the back, which provides all the power that I need for everything except um, the AC, of course. And I have to put the, the fridge on propane. It won't go on, on uh, lithium for a long period of time overnight. Mm -hmm. So if, I, if right now I'm on battery, it works fine. But if, if I were spending the night here, I'd, I'd have to turn on the propane or plug it in. What do you see your future as in your van? I plan to be on the road as long as I can do it. I love being on the road. I can't ever imagine owning a house or even renting a house. Uh, I just love love travel. Now, if any of you ladies are out there want to, to know more about traveling in a van, you could certainly reach out to me. I'd love to take you or meet you or whatever, uh, but just uh, let me know if I can help in any way.